Welcome to the Swipe Right Effect podcast, where we will be sharing with you the power to get unstuck by swiping right on yourself. Your host, author CK Collins, aka Kelly, gets personal with her guests, sharing stories of themselves getting unstuck with wisdom and guidance. Where do you feel stuck? Are you waiting to get your new life started after a big change? You've come to the right place. Kelly's book is available on Amazon and through your local bookstores. Look for the Swipe Right Effect, the power to get unstuck. Kelly's interviews with 10 friends from around the world unlock powerful truths to getting your new life started. So with that said, welcome to the Swipe Right Effect podcast. Hey there, it's CK Collins, aka Kelly, and I want to let you know about something I made just for you. It's called a self care scorecard. And it's 10 essential questions to to check in and see the level of your own self-care. And I'd love to talk to you about it once you take it and you have questions. I love to meet with people and create strategies for moving forward and having a really positive, helpful, happy life. So you can find that at ckcollins.co forward slash self-care cckollins.co forward slash self-care. All right, let's get on and meet our guest. Welcome back to the Swipe Right Effect, the power to get unstuck. I'm CK Collins, aka Kelly, and today we have a pretty exciting guest. His name is John Lawyer, and let me tell you about him real quick before we get started. I think John's story is very unique. Um, He was a counterintelligence special agent um, when he was in the army and also an asymmetric warfare specialist. have no idea what that is, but he was responsible for coordinating various operations for a special USAF unit in Afghanistan for six years. Wow. So, (laughs) so he's gone from receiving a bronze star for counterterrorism operations to walking through a swamp of sadness anxious to hear about this, to an amazing path of spiritual healing and awareness. The transition from a warrior in Kuwait, Baghdad, and Kandahar over many years to a spiritualist and universalist is a pretty powerful story. He created a nonprofit spiritual community named Kashar. And so welcome, John. Yeah, thank you so much, Kelly. I appreciate it. Thank you for the introduction. Sure. And I am... um, very anxious to hear about the transition, but can we, I'm going to kind of go backwards. I'd love to start with Kashar. Can you tell us where the name came from and, and tell us about the spiritual community? Yeah. We know when we, we founded it, we felt like, you know, the name's obviously important. So we thought about it for a while and Kishar is the Sumerian goddess of mother earth or or like Gaia. And it also uh, means the line on the horizon, which we kind of thought kind of beautifully encapsulates that journey that we're all on, you know, in, in life and, and our spiritual journey. So line in the horizon, as in the sunset and the sunrise. Yeah. That, that divide between like earth and sky and earth and sun. Oh, oh, I love that. <laughs> and, and I, as I told you before we got started, God, I love the whole goddess thing. And I, I love that she represents mother earth. I think that's beautiful. So this whole season is about self-care. And um, as we were talking before the show, what I'm hoping to open some hearts and minds to is the idea that self-care goes beyond exercise and massages and pedicures. <laughs> I yeah. believe self-care is really about the heart, the mind, and the soul. And I know that's there's a lot of work that you do at Kashar for alignment there. Can you talk about that? For sure. I mean, I love it because we're, we're definitely concerned with uh, that alignment of mind, body, soul. Like how do you uh, take care of yourself? And so self-care, self-love, I think self-care and self-love are synonymous almost, you know, mm-hmm. that uh, to have good self-care, we have to love ourselves first. And I, I, I believe in our society from a young age, we're taught, we're always taught to be heroes to someone else or to be, there for other people. Um, I don't think we're taught as much to to be there for ourselves uh, mm-hmm. and to love ourselves first and and foremost. And it's cliche, but you can always go back to the oxygen mask on the airplane, right? Where you got to put your own mask on first because 
we're not really going to be good to anybody else if we don't take care of ourselves first. Right. And uh, that that's if you even if you have kids, if you have a, a wife or a husband, uh, you know, we've got to take care of ourselves. And and I think sometimes loving ourselves is not easy because you know our mind and our ego are so busy. You know, uh, they try to keep us alive. They kept us alive for thousands of years, but uh, they kind of, the ego kind of overperforms, right? It's like, all right, yes. well, what about this? And what about this? And what about this? Because it's trying to keep us alive. It's what it's, it's, its job is. But we're, we live in a pretty safe world for the most part. And so I think we have to learn how to kind of put some of that to the side so we can take a minute and take everything in. That makes sense. Yes. Well, that actually gives me great comfort coming from a man who worked in counterterrorism to, to hear you say we live in a safe world for the most part. <laughs> right. Like that. <laughs> yeah. You made my day, John. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so I can imagine going from, you know, working in counterterrorism and being in Baghdad and Kandahar to, um, you know, having to re-enter the world, but did your journey of, of self-care and spiritual life begin there? And, and how did you, how did you transition to where you are now? That's a good question. Uh, it did not, I didn't take very good care of myself all those years. I, I guess the first 12 years out of the first 15 years of my adult life, I spent overseas. And so I know I was working hundred, 110 hours a week, seven days a week, you know, year round. So I was, I was fully in 100% immersed in my mission and dedicated to it. I was, I believed in what we were doing, especially at first as, as the time, as time drug on, I, I had some questions about, uh, the U S and Western military industrial complex, but, mm -hmm. um, that the transition, uh, was difficult. I, I had gone from this person that didn't ever have any extra time to think about anything. All I thought about was like doing my job. Um, so then one day I went home and I was done with all that. And I didn't really know who I was. I was like, I had no identity. I had no sense of self. Uh, I didn't, you know, I had kind of thought of myself, not in a necessarily egotistical way, but like I, I did important things. I thought I was, you know, I was really, you know, really good at my job. Yeah. And so outside of that, it's like, well, okay, well, who am I? And, and what am I? And I mean, I get back and like, think so much had changed that like car, car body styles had changed. I've been gone in, been in Afghanistan for so long, like six years. And so the world, the whole world had changed. And, uh, so I spent about seven years after that, just cause I was, I was in my early 30, early to mid thirties when that happened. And so and then the next seven years were just kind of gray and, uh, I was just kind of wandering through that swamp of sadness. I kind of talked about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the I can imagine. I mean, that as you're doing those seven years, that's a transition point in life anyway. And yeah. then seven years later, now okay, here we are in our 40s. And yep. uh, I mean, that's I work with women who are in midlife, and mm -hmm. there's there's all these different times and points in life where we all feel that way whether we've been in yeah. Baghdad or not. It's the, yeah. who am I? And okay, the kids are grown. Okay, who am I? <laughs> okay, I retired. Who am I? I mean, it's just, it's a natural part of life, but I can imagine how extreme that would be going from military out of the country in a desert to coming back and seeing Corvettes look really different now. Exactly. <laughs> I, I, I know. I, I love that you take it back to the every person, to the every woman, you know, because that's true. Like, we, and I don't think any, I don't believe any set of trauma or any set of, of difficulties in life or any better or worse than anybody else's. Right. I think we, we all have our, we all have our stuff that we carry around or that we're, you know, hopefully as we work through this, like with podcasts like yours and, and, and communities like mine, we we have less of it. But yeah, we all have stuff that we carry around, right? Um, so it, it's uh in that midlife, I you know, I I think this midlife part is a great focus because yeah, like we start to see 
that, okay, well, I'm 40, but there's still a whole lot of life left to live. You know, it's, mm -hmm. people are living longer. People are living healthier for longer. Um, so how do I turn, turn things around to, to, again, I think it goes back to what you're talking about, taking care of myself. How, how do I actually do that? And, and what is it beyond, okay, I can go exercise and I can be fit. I can eat healthy food. I can sleep right. But beyond that, what else is there? Yeah. And that goes back to that alignment of mind, body, and soul. So you're taking care of the body part, you know, where, where's the soul part, the spirit part. And for me, a lot of it, I work with people quite a bit on, well, do you know what your higher purpose is? I, oh. I, I was just getting ready to ask you that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, good. We're on, yeah. we're, we're on the same wavelength. Absolutely. I love it. Yes. Cause that's, you know, I think part of the, who am I question that we all get to at those different stages is at least partially, if not mostly, answered by understanding what your life purpose is. That thing that makes your eyes light up and your heart race and you just have your sparkly <laughs> because you're living your life purpose. So how, do, how does Kashar community um, introduce that idea or how do you help people find their higher purpose? That's a beautiful question because really that's how I spend most of my time on that subject, probably with uh, both community members, just people that join the community to be community members and an individual clients as well. People either, because some people don't know what their higher purpose is. Some people kind of have an essence of it and some people do know what it is, but it's not aligned with their day-to-day -day life. So I think the first question is what what is your higher purpose? And if you don't know that, you know, there's some conversations people can have to find, to find it out. Cause we, it's going to be different for each person. And I think that it can shift through our lives, uh, you know, and change. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you don't know it, you know, people have to ask themselves, like you said it light in their eyes, what lights you up? What, what can you not wait to do the next day? Once you go to bed, like, what can you not wait to get up and do the next day? What, what is that? And is that something that you do every day? Is it, it, ideally it would be part of your job because we spend so much time at work, you know, but if it's not, are you doing it outside of work? You know, there's, and if you're not aligned with that higher purpose, if you don't understand what it is and if you don't, and then if you don't seek out how to align it with your daily life, you're not going to be as joyful and as happy as you could be, which mm -hmm. means the people around you, your spouse, your children, aren't also going to be in as good a place as they could be if you're not in your best place because when we take care of ourselves when we have self-love when we are living our higher purpose then we lift up ourselves which means we lift up that whole world around us right one of my mentors said um how you're feeling and what's going on within you is how everyone else experiences you too yes so if you're not happy and you're not doing anything about it, then try to understand that that is actually affecting everyone around you at work, at home, at play. Um, you know, when, when you're suffering in silence, it may be silent, but it's not, it's still right. affecting everyone around you. And which, so that's why which, I believe the spirituality is so important. And that feeds right back into you. So you're affecting everybody around you negatively and then suddenly they're affecting you negatively so it's just a feedback loop of problem for you yeah. uh it's very powerful yeah and i i feel like the women i work with also um and naturally do and i think it's important that they do start trying to find a deeper understanding of their spirituality like Right. That going and nothing against going to church, <laughs> but the going to church and just doing that busy Sunday morning thing isn't enough anymore that you, as you mature, you get to, you just start feeling it. You start understanding there's so much more that I don't know. And so I wanted to ask you about your spiritual beliefs and if you could share about that. Yeah, I, I believe very deeply that. <laughs> Philosophy, religion, uh, spirituality is this deeply 
individual personal thing inside of us. Uh, what I believe is not going to be what anybody else believes really. And so I call myself a universalist or an ominous, which means I believe in the validity of pretty much whatever anybody thinks around the world from across time throughout, throughout earth, like it's valid. And, uh, mm -hmm. we should be able to stand next to each other and have a conversation about it and even practice our individual belief in spirituality without, um, you know, any type of, uh, closed mindedness or hate or anything like that. We should be very open about it. And, um, because, you know, we, we can't tell someone else what their answer is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I love that, that everyone's beliefs are valid because they believe it. Right. <laughs> right. I think that's what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I think the other part of, uh, midlife, it, um, that plays into this shift in curiosity um, but also a shift in openness. The, I know with, in my situation, my life, I was so busy raising the kids. Um, when they got a little older, I started a company. I was running the company, you know, it could be 60 hours a week. It could be 80 hours a week, but it's a news business. So stuff's got to get done. <laughs> and, um, and then when I sold the business, it was just, my mind wasn't occupied with that anymore. And that's a natural progression, whether you're getting a divorce and selling a business or whether, you know, just your kid and you're an empty nester now. And there's that time that is such a gift to yeah. dig deeper that the time you used to spend running your kids to soccer practice and basketball and church and everything that everything that you thought you were supposed to be doing and you were doing all the good things or maybe not <laughs> but it's all of a sudden this space um and i just i'm when someone's a part of your community is is that do you suggest that is that a practice how do the, how do you suggest they fill that curiosity that space that openness that's the perfect way to look at it is that's the question. How do you, what is your spirituality? What does it look like? And if you don't know what it looks like, I can give you, or the community can give you, or the material we create can give you examples that you can draw from, uh, from around, from around the world, different spiritual traditions, different religious traditions, and, uh, what works for you, what calls to you, what speaks to you individually. Uh, you, and you could even look at it from a, you know, is it the divine? Is it is it God? Is it the self with a capital S? There's all different things you can call. I call it the universe. Um, it can be any of those things, Christ consciousness or, or or the Brahman or the Tao, right? It's all this stuff. So what what resonates with you? What speaks to you? What what gets you in a spiritual mindset, a spiritual way of being? And then how do you uh, live that? Like what are your when what are your what are the values of that? practice what are your own values i mean i think a lot of people you ask them to sit down and write what their values are their beliefs and i think it might take them a while to to start to put stuff on paper mm -hmm. but i think you know we have to know what our values and beliefs are so that we can live them every day and and, and like in this intentional aware way so our community is about if you're already spiritual, developing it how you want to develop it. If you don't know what your spirituality is and you want to to have that part of your life more of kind of fleshed out, how to how to do that. Mm. What during your time in the desert um, empowers or helps you now on your spiritual path? I think. The desert taught me a lot of things. It taught me a lot about life, taught me a lot about the other side. And that it gave me the, I think when you're a part of this great darkness, you, you get great contrast to the light. And I mm -hmm. think that's one reason you see spiritual teachers or guides, because I'm also a student, you know, um, but you see them come from darkness because it, it provides contrast to the light. And it also makes you realize the universe is this balanced thing. If you go out in nature, there's balance everywhere, these cycles of life. And like, if you suddenly realize, oh, I'm the balance walking between light and dark and I can choose to look a certain direction. So, I mean, I choose to look at the light, but it's important to know that the darkness exists. I think that helps teach people that 
it's about the light. It's about love. It's about joy. There's some deep acceptance that has to come and -hmm. letting go that has to come from darkness. I think we have to accept that within us and without us, there's darkness in the world. There's darkness within us. And, and that helps us really appreciate and live the light. If that makes, that makes sense. When you are talking about the darkness, I think I understand, but how, how does it relate to what you call your swamp of sadness? You know, I, it's like I was lost in this place that was dark and like, I still had, I still had some positivity and kindness about me, but I was lost in this thing and I didn't really know how to get out of it. I, but I didn't let it consume me. Uh, but it was just just sad, dark place. And, you know, we see it, we see it in popular culture. We see it with like, like Harry Potter, where, where Ron has the deluminator, right. And has that light. And, you know, Lord of the Rings has it with, with the light with Sam and Frodo. It's like we see, the light out in, in even our popular culture, the idea that even in the darkest times, even in those most difficult times, we still have light. And for me, that's what it was about is finding that because we're whole inside, even if right. we don't know it, right? We have that light, even if we can't see it. Yeah. Uh, so I think it's about finding a sense of that. And then, and then we find our path back. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. One of my, clients, we have this exercise where we, we start early on in, in the process and we write a letter from our 90 year old self to our current day self. And she couldn't do it. She was like blocked for a week and a half. <laughs> she just was like, I can't, I can't. And when she finally did the 90 year old self was saying, you already have everything you need. You already yeah. know everything you need to know to make your dreams come true. And yes. I think that people, and maybe, I don't know if it's just Western Westerners, cause I haven't, I've traveled a lot out of the country, but I've never lived out of the country. So I don't know, but I know Americans seem to think there's, I have to always want more. I always have to be thinking of the future and how do I get more and how do I get more? And we don't think this soul was created with everything it needed and yes, trauma happens and, and you have to recover from that. But yeah, I think that, I think that that's beautiful to, I've never heard it said like that, that you're already whole. We're all already whole. Yeah. And, Hmm. and there's that, there is that deep sense of gratitude we need of like, I am enough. And what I have, my possessions are enough and uh, the relationships that I have are good and enough. The ones that I want to keep, you know, uh, that gratitude is an extremely powerful thing. Mm, I love that. Yep. I did a, I did a talk on that just this morning. <laughs> okay. Yeah, And it was, I'm trying to remember what St. Ambrose said, but it's, it was something like there is, there is no more important duty than gratitude. Yeah. And I, I was like, yeah, that's because when you live that, that's what I was, if you live in gratitude, then everything else feels so incredibly beautiful. <laughs> right. There's a light yeah. on the world or you see the light through a different lens, the uh, life through a different lens, um, through the, the lens of gratitude. Um, I wanted to ask you about stream of unconsciousness because I saw yeah. that in your work. And I had not heard that. So I want you to teach me. (laughs) Okay. One of the, one of the, one of the most powerful things we can do from a self care, self love perspective, I think is to realize that from a very young age, we are told kind of what we have to be or can't be or should do or shouldn't do by parents, teachers, friends, coworkers, bosses, you know? And so I call it the stream of unconsciousness. It's this like pull of society that wants us to live a very certain specific way. It mm-hmm. wants us to do and not do certain things. And it can be warm, it can be inviting and easy, and you can just kind of float down it, but there's more. There's something really much more outside of that stream of consciousness. It's not very deep. You can just stand up and look around, and then you can decide who you are. Like, you know, again, back to that, what do I believe? What are my values? What is, what do I, how do I see the world? How do I see the universe? How do I see my mind, body, and soul 
in context of of that, separate from everyone else, separate from all these other organizations and cause all these tribes. We're very tribal people. Um, so who am I? And it goes back to that question. And th so if we can step out of that stream of unconsciousness, there's this beautiful world around us that uh, we can see with more intention and awareness, which kind of sounds tiring, I think sometimes, or abstract, but it's mm. a deep sense of self-care and self-love if we can uh, see this thing for ourselves. Yeah. And one of the things that I believe is most important and how I work with clients is I, I work to keep them in community and oh, yeah. because the work you and I are talking about right now, um, can make you feel very vulnerable or not make you feel vulnerable. You do feel vulnerable. <laughs> and, right. um, so I think that community and being surrounded by people who you trust and it helps if you're like-minded, but it's not absolutely necessary. And right. if, if like-minded in the possibilities that there are in life and like-minded that I'm here to keep you safe and you're here to keep me safe that way, not like political beliefs. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Spiritually safe place. Um, how? So your community is an online community. So how, do, how does that work with Kashar? No, I, and that's exactly why it exists is because when people are going through this journey, it's nice to be able to have connection and warmth during it. And even if people believe different things than you, you know, so yes, so it helps because we have, we have uh, places where we chat throughout the day. Um, we have prompts where we ask questions that are helpful to get conversation started. And we have, you know, text chat back and forth, you know, there's, uh, you know, deep, meaningful co conversation. There's memes and gifts and that kind of thing. There's. <laughs> Uh, we have, we have daily, uh, intentional movement prompts and affirmations and meditation prompt. And we do journaling. We have a journaling group and we also have, uh, weekly round tables where we have zoom conversations that are kind of lightly moderated, just kind of like you and I are talking right now. Yeah. Um, we, we believe there's room for authentic, meaningful connection in the digital age. Like there's room for that. There's room to, to have a community where you can be supported um, because we kind of all, we grow up now, we leave our hometowns and we're in different places. And so it's sometimes it's hard to develop that sense of community. Right. And I mean, since COVID, it's been easier and easier to be able to right. be online in community. I, I try to bring my circles of women together originally, but then following that, we we do all the work online, um, master classes and right. Um, all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, that's, I guess that's just part of the self-learning, self-love, self-care path these days in the modern age, like to find your spiritual path and to follow your spiritual path. It's almost like this online stuff has to be a part of it. I, I, I think for, for most people, yes. I think, you know, there's, you know, I I say this quite a bit, but most of us aren't going to be a monk, you know, living in a monastery, in the foothills <laughs> of some mountain, right? We're going to be living in the real world. So yeah, I think for most people, it's necessary because of just the pace and the 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 construct of how we live today. So if someone comes to you and wants to work one on one, what does that look like? Uh. We, uh, we have them fill out like a, you know, a kind of a questionnaire, like, Hey, what, what are you all about? And you don't mm -hmm. have to answer the questions if you don't want to. And, and then we kind of take that and kind of tailor a really specific, uh, individual, um, process that we work through. Uh, there's, there's a, it depends on the person. There's some methodologies we use, uh, where we look at their their spirituality and the questions about that, the oneness with with the universe, the how do they understand their self, and then kind of self love and um, also lifestyle stuff goes into it as well because we mm. have to kind of factor that in. How do we intersect with the real world, our spirituality, and that alignment of mind, body, soul, and and we kind of tailor it to each person, and and we do look at higher purpose and dharma and 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 all that as well. Awesome. So. If somebody's interested in being a part of Kashar, how do, what does that look like? How do they find you? 
yeah, our main site is kishar.org. It's uh, K-I-S-H-A-R.org. And that's kind of the entrance to our community where you can just be a member and uh, you can chat or you can just kind of watch and uh, see people interact and, and, and develop connections. And then that's also where people can get our one-on-one spiritual guidance and coaching and it's got links to our socials. And we also have a, an open and public YouTube that is hopefully we think pretty useful. It's got just different ideas about how to kind of walk a spiritual path and kind of go about your journey. Oh, that sounds amazing. So is the YouTube channel named Kashar? It's actually called peace on your journey. Peace. And okay. yeah, it's uh it's on YouTube and it's um, we got, I think almost 50 videos up now and uh, they're just trying to help people out. What made you decide to make it a nonprofit? That's a really, uh, it's a really meaningful question to me. I, I want to give back to the world. Um, mm-hmm. I'm living my higher purpose. My higher purpose is to help people help themselves. And uh, I am, I'm taken care of, you know, kind of financially. So I don't need a salary. I don't need um, uh, any of that. So I just want to, I want to help people. I want to like find an audience and and I want to share my journey and hopefully people can share theirs and, have people help each other. And, uh, it's a, it's a very, uh, kind of an altruistic, uh, goal that I have. And I co-founded it with my wife and another friend of ours that we met in Afghanistan that was there with us. Oh, she was there too. Wow. <laughs> and my wife, my wife was with me throughout this whole thing, by the way, like wow. she, she, her story, my story is really her story as well. Yeah. Oh. Well, I, I would love to meet her again <laughs> sometime uh, as yeah. well. So, well, thank you for your service, both of you. Thank and you. Um, and thank you for creating this for other people. I mean, I think um, I can tell you're living your higher purpose. You know, I think when, when somebody is and you feel this way, I, I feel like I am too. And so yeah. it's great to have conversations with people at that level, because, um, we're a community in a different way. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, our, you know, I want to help people help themselves too. And it, and it feels really good to be doing that at this place in my life at this time. Yeah. I love your podcast and I, I'd also appreciate what you're doing. I think anybody who's out there, you know, making the world a better place is, is doing great work. So I, I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate what you do. Oh, thank you. Same. <laughs> Just a big love fest. So, <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for coming on, John. And um, if everybody wants to hang on just a second, I've got something I want to share with them. Wow. That was a great conversation with John Lawyer. I really appreciate him coming on. So um, as you've been listening to my podcast this season, it is completely dedicated to self-care And I want everybody to really dig in the self-care of, yes, the body, but also the heart, the mind, the soul, the relationships uh, um, in your life. And so I created a self-care scorecard um, where you can kind of measure your level of self-care and see if there is opportunity for improvement. You can find that self-care scorecard at cckollins.co, and yes, that is .co, forward slash self-care, all one word. So cckollins.co, forward slash self-care. So thank you for tuning in today. I hope you'll give that scorecard a consideration, and um, there's opportunity to book a call with me on my website, and I'm always happy to sit with you for an hour and share some strategies on how you can improve your self-care That's what I'm here for. It's my passion and my higher purpose. So thank you for checking in with us today. And I'll see you next week on the Swipe Right Effect, The Power to Get Unstuck. Kelly's book is available on Amazon and through your local bookstores. Look for the Swipe Right Effect, The Power to Get Unstuck. Kelly's interviews with 10 friends from around the world unlock powerful truths to getting your new life started 